President Biden treading a thin line just days after approving the sale of precision guided weapons to Israel. Senator Tom Cotton is a Republican on the Armed Services Committee. Lots to get to with you. I do want to ask you something that just happened on the show. I brought up the fact that uh, the squad has been very aggressive in undermining Israel and calling on the Biden administration to switch course, to not support Israel, to pull back. I asked Senator Coons about that and the Democrats being defined by that position. Here's what he said. Well, the Democratic position is only framed by those few far left quotes here on Fox. Now, I pointed out that The Washington Post has a column today on this. You're out there and about. I mean, you're there on Capitol Hill. How do you think the Democrats are being defined on this as they th think about pulling back on weapons or calling for a ceasefire and the rest? Well, Dana, a growing number of Democrats, whether it's elected Democrats in the United States Congress or their far left base or simply anti-Israel. You've seen this in uh, the way they've called Israel an apartheid state in recent days, or they've demanded that U.S. cut off military support for Israel, or they've equivocated uh, between the democratic nation of Israel and Hamas and Islamic Jihad, two Islamic terrorist organizations. But there is no moral equivalence. Israel has to be able to defend itself and to defend itself, Israel has to destroy Hamas's war machine. That's what the United States should communicate clearly to everyone involved and to the world, and that's what we should back all the way. It, it appears this administration is behind Israel. President Biden over the weekend said Israel's got the right to defend itself. Uh, the reports about the approved weapon sale, about $735 million in weapons, will continue uh, to Israel. Um, can, you, can you take issue with what the president's done so far on this? Well, I'm troubled by the president's uh, summary of his call with Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday saying that he supports a ceasefire. Uh, Chuck Schumer, the Democratic floor leader in the Senate, said the same thing yesterday. These calls for a ceasefire are tantamount to Hamas propaganda. We cannot allow Hamas to file thousands of rockets and missiles into Israel and then to run back into its tunnels and run behind women and children and say, oh, we need a ceasefire, and then support those calls for a ceasefire. And Bill, you mentioned the sale of precision-guided munitions to Israel as well. This has been in the works for months. It was noticed to Congress before the current conflict, yet Democrats in Congress are asking the Biden administration to put a halt to it. It'll be a real test for the Biden administration this week on whether they go forward with this badly needed uh, arms sale to Israel. It'll also be a signal to all of our partners around the world about whether or not the United States rem remains a strong and reliable partner. Could you speak to the points about Iran backing Hamas and Hezbollah, um, and including the fact that this could have also been a test to see how good Israel is at defending itself? Yeah, Dana, I mean, all those missiles and rockets that Hamas and Islamic Jihad have may as well be stamped with made in Iran. Iran has been providing financial support to Hamas and Islamic Jihad and in the north to Hezbollah for years. Now, that support has declined in recent years as we've slapped them with so many sanctions. But the Biden administration's policy of weakness in the Middle East have created the conditions for this chaos in the Middle East by signaling that we want to reenter the nuclear deal with Iran, that we want to give them billions of dollars in sanctions relief, that we're going to restrain our allies like Israel, we're going to cut off weapon sales to Iran's Arab uh, adversaries like Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. We have been emboldening our adversaries throughout the Middle East. That's one reason why you're seeing this uh, attack on Israel today. Well, if you do an Iran deal and there's another exchange of money, you probably look at another conflict here in, in, in due order. And I'm, uh, that's what Mike Pompeo's talked about. That's what we talked about about yesterday with Jack Keane. Another topic here, you know this building was taken out in Gaza over the weekend that housed apparently Al Jazeera and also the Associated Press. New York Post has an interesting comment here uh, online. It says if the AP, Associated Press, really didn't know its shared space with, with Hamas, why trust its reporting? Uh, the idea suggesting that Hamas was in the building and that's why it was a target. Post goes on to say this, if it's true that the AP was so unaware and the evidence suggests it's unlikely, how can anyone trust its reporting in the region? It seems that what AP doesn't know and doesn't report always favors Hamas over those the group terrorizes. Do you have an opinion on that, Senator? Yeah, Bill, you raised some very uncomfortable question for the Associated Press's leadership questions that demand answers. I mean, what's worse, the AP was sharing an office with Hamas and they weren't reporting on it, or they didn't even know that they were down the hallway 
from a U.S. designated terrorist organization. Look, it's been documented in the public record by former reporters themselves that the Associated Press has pulled its punches, that it's refused to report on Hamas firing rockets and missiles from the street just outside of its building, that it refuses to report on Hamas's effort to intimidate reporters inside of Gaza. So this is not surprising, but we do need answers to these uncomfortable questions from the Associated Press just leadership. Just to put a fine point on AP apparently has worked out of that office for 15 years, according to the story. Dana, go ahead. Well, go ahead, Senator. I was going to say, I mean, it's hard to imagine that they didn't know their neighbors for 15 years were a U.S. designated terrorist organization. Where do we go from here with the Biden administration now calling for a ceasefire? Um, do you think Israel would listen? They shouldn't listen because imagine what Americans would think if a country like, say, Cuba were firing missiles and rockets into cafes in Miami and Orlando and Mobile and New Orleans. They should destroy Hamas's war machine and we should give them the time and the space and the resources they need to totally destroy Hamas. Senator, thank you for your time. Tom Cotton, thank there you. live on the Hill. Thanks a lot for that.